Uh, take a look at Ephesians chapter... Oh, no, let me read a couple more passages here because we're going to make a comparison. Uh, 26 through 28. For, as, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you were baptized into Christ that put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. Take a look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. Ephesians 2. 11 through 13, therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Yeshua Messiah, you are uh, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Messiah. You can draw an equal signs, equal signs between uh, Galatians uh, three twenty eight and Ephesians two eleven through 4, thirteen because it's saying exactly the same thing. He's he's bunching these ideas together. Really, we're talking about the same issue right here. We've talking been talking about the entire book of Galatians is that you've got people trying to use the circumstances to elevate their position. And, and, and create a, a hierarchical or caste system between one group of people and another group of people in the congregation. And they're using circumcision as that device of leverage. And that's exactly what Paul's talking against. That's what verse 28 is about there. Right? Where it says uh, in verse 3, where it says, We, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. See? So, but. Typically, that's what we're, we're taught. The elements of the world, the, the rudimentary things, that, that's, that's the Jewish stuff. Okay? We see in verse 9, uh, verse 8 and 9, but then you didn't, we talked about this from the very beginning. We, but then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which were by nature are not gods, plural. So there are polytheists. But now after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how is, that, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements. Now, if you can draw a line from the word elements in verse 9 up to the word um, elements in verse 3, because it's the same word. We've talked about the Greek language before. When you have the same word together, it means the same thing. So the Greek, so the weak and beggarly elements, the elements of the world that Paul's referring to in verse 3 is the same elements that, he, that, that they're turning to again to for bondage in verse 9, which is a, uh, a pagan understanding. If they've taken the, the, the Jewish scriptures and they redefined them with pagan ideas. Colossians 2, 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after, after the traditions of men. After the rudiments, the stokia, that's the same word as the elements, the beggarly elements, of the world and not after Christ. Stokia actually isn't a bad word. That's the interesting thing about it. It doesn't mean the basement of the outhouse. It's not that, that kind of idea. It's actually the rudimentary things, the starting place, the uh, uh, primordial ideas. So, very important when we talk about exegesis and how we understand scriptures, because this is really foundational to how we interpret it, the Bible, interpret it, interpret the Bible, as opposed to our Christian counterparts. Because what happens is, you, in, in, in most Christianity, people ask, well, what's the difference between what you believe and what anybody else believes? And I tell people it's the starting place. You, in, in most of your traditional churches, you start with, if you're Baptist, the Pauline Epistles. If you're Book of Romans, that's where you start with. If you're Pentecostal, it's the Book of Acts. Um, if you're something else, it might be the Book of John. Anyway, you start with this one place, and you build your theology from that. That place that you start is those rudimentary part places. Now, the thing about the, the New Testament is that it had a starting place, too. And so that's what we believe, what makes us different, is we're going to go back to their starting place. We're going to establish that as what is our foundation. And we're going to build our understanding of the rest of Scripture based on that. That's Torah. 
instead of building it from ideas that, that we have our own pre preconceived understandings of these texts when we come to them. So if I start with the book of Romans, I'm interpreting the book of Romans from where I came from before that. And that's Greek thinking, pagan theology.